So for now, what I'm going to write is uh, taking those two beer emojis to indicate two. Um, my natural log is two times e, so I'm just going to write two e like so. Okay, so I've done the boundaries and now I'm going to have a look at the integrand here, the thing being integrated. So I've got my pizza, that's an E. And uh, here's the first appearance of the ice cream emoji, which I said at the start I was going to denote with an X. So I write an X there. Then you've got um, this differential operator, DX, here. Uh, well, part of a differential operator anyway. And then the answer to this is the solution to the puzzle. So what's this equal to? Now, the reason why the second line of the puzzle goes to such lengths to arrive at this special number, e, is because e to the x is a special exponential. It is a function whose derivative, and by, uh, you know, sort of comparison with that, its integral, is itself. When you differentiate e to the x, you get e to the x, and if you integrate e to the x, um, it'll be e to the x plus a constant, okay? So it's a very special function. The vast majority of functions out there don't do this. So when I integrate e to the x, my primitive function is e to the x. This is a definite integral, that's why I don't need to worry about the constant of integration for those of you following on at home. And then I'm going to evaluate it uh, at the bottom and the top limits. So log e and log 2e. Now some of you will be asking, um, Eddie, why did you not simplify the natural log of e? That's the log base e of e, that's just equal to one. Well, I could, but as you'll see in a second, uh, it doesn't end up helping us very much, or it's just as useful to leave it in its current form. Let me show you why. The next step, now that I've got the primitive function I've integrated, is I need to evaluate at the top boundary, subtract that from the bottom boundary. So I'm gonna get e to the power of log 2e, that's the upper boundary for x, and I'm gonna subtract that from e to the power of just regular log e. So this is now what I need to evaluate. Now at this point here, um, if I had substituted log e to be equaling to 1, log e equals 1, the natural log of e I should say, then this last little part of the expression e to the power of log e would just be e, whoops, didn't mean my highlighter there, would just be e to the power of 1. So that's just E, no big deal, it is indeed that. But that doesn't help you so much with this first part of the expression, this guy over here. Um, you can't do it so neatly, so what do we do with it? Now in order to solve this, I'm just gonna take a, a slight step to one side. Uh, let's choose a different color like orange here. And I'm gonna explain how we can deal with this e to the power of log something, okay? So you can actually say, if I, if I had e to the power of anything you like, Let's call it u, okay? Let's just focus on this for a second. What would this be equal to? Well, again, supposing I don't know what this, what value it should take, let's just give it another uh, name, let's just call it k. What we want to do is find out what k is. But now that I've written an equation, I can actually work with both sides of this and I can, uh, I can do some manipulation that helps me determine the value of k. So let's have a go at this. If I say, e to the log u equals k, the first thing that comes to my mind is I want to get that log u out of the index. There's a couple of ways you could do this. You could rewrite this exponential equation all in terms of logs, um, but you, it gets a bit confusing uh, for some people when they sh see the next line, which would just be log base e of k equals log u. That's the definition of a logarithm on the basis of an exponential equation. So this is true. Um, but I'm just going to put it to one side because there might be another easier way to argue it, even though <laughs> it's going to take slightly more working, but people generally, when I show this to them, especially my students, they're happier with this argument than they are with the one that I just showed you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take logs of both slides. Let me move this over a little bit. If I take logs of both sides, I'm going to get the natural log of e to the log u on the left, and then on the right hand side I'll get the natural log of k. So far so good. I'm going to use the, uh, the power law or the index law that some of you might be familiar with, with logs, to take this, uh, let's use a different color here, to take this log u over here and I can move that out the front, it becomes the coefficient. So log u out the front times log of whatever is remaining once I take that index away, which in this case is the e. So that equals log k. Let's move this over so it's all nice and neat. 
All right, now uh, a minute or two ago, I mentioned that log e, the natural log of e is just one. So on the left-hand side, if that's just one, I just get left with log u and that's equal to log k. So this clearly shows that u and k have to be identical. So if I go back to my original line here, instead of writing e to the log u equals k, since k is u, I can say e to the log u is just u. So, e to the power of log something is just that something, whatever's inside that log function. And now I'm ready to come back to our original puzzle over here. Now that I've got this all written in place, what's my u in this case? Well, the first one, my u is 2e. So, e to the power of log 2e is just 2e. And then when I have a look on the next one, I say this is e to the power of log What's my u in this case? Well, the u in this case is e. So e to the log e, as we saw before, is just a single e. So 2e minus e, that gives a solution of e. That, I think, is what the author of this puzzle was intending. Um, so the answer, as is often the case in life, is pizza. Now, I did promise that if I solve this puzzle for the 1 plus 1 equals 2, version of the answer, then I would also do it for these other two solutions. Well, let's quickly e address each one. If I have a look at this first one here, if the two beers are just equal to one, then what you've really got here um, is you've got natural log of e on the lower boundary. And then if you have a look at the top boundary, well, if it's one times a pizza, that's one times e, then the top boundary is also log e. Now, if uh, one of the properties of a definite integral is if you integrate from one place to itself, um, you're not integrating over any interval, you're actually just integrating from somewhere to itself, so you actually get a value of zero. Um, that would be the solution that you get over here in the question mark, which um, I guess would be true, but not particularly satisfying. It's like, wow, I can't believe I did all that work. And I just got zero, okay? So that's what happens if you take two beers to equal one. Uh, what happens if you take two beers to equal 11? Well, it's not too difficult to follow the argument. If you have a look and see everywhere where I wrote two, which came from the two beers, if I replace every two with an 11, then you're going to see the result fall out fairly quickly. So the first, uh, let's replace it with a green, 11, there's the first replacement. Uh, here it comes up again because I'm evaluating the top boundary. Um, here is another appearance that becomes an 11. And then finally, I have an 11 here. Well, 11e e minus e, I guess, is 10e, e, which again also is true. It's no easier or harder than when I solved it for if two beers were equal to two, but 10e is, is not as elegant and beautiful and uh, uh, nice of a surprise to be able to say as the answer, uh, 10 pizzas rather than one pizza. I think it's nicer to say the solution is just one of them. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that puzzle. Thanks for playing along. And uh, yeah, next time you encounter one of these, do pay close attention to the maths, but if you want to get the answer right, um, pay close attention to the emojis.